Greetings and welcome to a new video about analog electronics and we continue with our diode circuits and this will be our second example. In this example we'll look at the circuit where we have two diodes. In the first example we look at the circuit where we have only one diode. Of course we will look at our calculations step by step and also verify these in SPI simulations. So let's look at our problem. We have the following circuit with a VS, the DC voltage source of, v, uh, of uh, 16 volts. We have the R1, R2, R3 and R4, four resistors and we have two diodes. The diodes are assumed to be ideal, but we will use the constant voltage model. So the voltage model, constant voltage model means the following. You have at VD on, up to VD on, there is no current flow, so there will be zero volts. And from VD on and larger, the diode will be modeled by a battery which is just a VD on. That value is then 0.7 volts. So this is reverse bias if it is open, so there is no connection, there is no current flow. If there is a current flow, there will be forward bias and there will be just a battery, which is then 0.7, which is valid for D1 and D2. Okay, we would like to calculate the current through D1, diode one, and also the current through D2. And also the resistor R3, the current through that, or I3, and also the output voltage V out. So we have four things we need to determine here. So how do we work it out? Let's look at the method. I always use, most of the time use the node voltage analysis, so I designate a node here, which is node X. It's already actually a node V out, so that can be also used, so I just designate it as extra node here, node X. So I will use at the node the Kirchhoff's current low, KCL, at node X. What do I see? I see two currents coming in, I2 and ID1, in this node, and two currents are leaving, so that means I3 and ID2. So I can say I2 plus ID1 will make I3 plus ID2. Now, if I now use now Ohm's law, for each branch in the circuit, so ID1 and I2 and also I3 and ID2. So for I2 I can say this voltage node Vs minus the Vx over the R2, that is this. Now for this branch, the top branch, I can say it is Vs minus the Vd1 ohm, that is the first diode, minus Vx over R1, that is this. Now I3 is just the Vx over R3 and Vx minus V2, Vd2 on my, uh, over R4, that is this part of the branch. Now we have an expression where we see the Vd on, the Vx and also the resistor and also the Vs. So we can now substitute the values that are given, Vd on was 0.7, 16 volts for our Vs and also the resistor values. Okay. Now we have 100 for the R2, 200 for R1, etc. So let's just write it down. Now we can simplify this by multiplying the left and right hand side by 600. So we can get rid of these fractions. So we will have this. So six times this, three times this one, two times this, and then just this one. Now if I now collect the terms and also work out this parentheses, you will get 96 minus 6vx, etc. You will see the expression here. Now we can collect the Vx terms and also the constants. So I will place the Vx on the right side and the constant on the right, uh, left side. So we'll have this. The Vx will be then 142.6 over 12. That will be give me 11.88 volts. So the V out is also 11.88 volts because that is this node. So exactly. So then we have the V out is exactly Vx, which is then 11.88. That is the question D. Okay, ID2 can be calculated because since we know the Vx, we now have a lot of information in the circuit. We can say, since we set it already here in the expression, that Vx minus V2, Vd2 on over R4. And that will give me then this result will be give me 18.6 milliamps. So you always use Ohm's law. You need to determine just a dual drop across the specific resistor and you know your branch current. Similarly for I3, that is this part, which is Vx minus zero, so which is Vx over R3, which is also V out, 
So it is 11.88 over 300 will give me 39.6 milliamps. Now we also want to know the I2 because for the calculation of the ID1 I need I2 since this expression requires that. So I2 is Vs minus Vx over R2. So it will give me 41.2 milliamps. Now we are now uh, almost done. So we can say what is now ID1. Now we can again set up this equation. Just repeat here. Substitute the values we have just determined. So 0 0.0412 and also the other one. So the I3 and the ID2. Now we can calculate this ID1, just a simple addition, etc. So we'll give you, you have exactly 17 milliamps. Now, this is all what we need to calculate. And now we have it. And now let's now bring that together here. So we have A, B, C, D, and these are the results. Okay, let's also look at the simulation results. That's also very important. You see here the circle already drawing. So you see the 16 volts the resistors and also the diode 1 and diode 2. You see here the V out node, so we'll measure here the V out. And there's also current arrow here in four branches. We had calculated for, I, this must be by the way I2. So we have calculated for this was 41.2 approximately. So this is what we have also very close to that one. ID1 is 16.95 milliamps approximately. So we had 17, so very close to that. The I3 is here 39.6 approximately here, also very close to what we have. And the V out is 11.878, very close to what we have, 11.88. So this is the verification that the results are indeed uh, correct. And you see the I2, I1, I2, I3, etc. Those are very close to what we have calculated. The small error is due to that model of the diode, because if you look at a diode voltage, which must be 0.7 volts because that's what we have determined, which is not always the case. It can be uh, vary between the 500 millivolts up to 800 millivolts, depending on the current flow. So we can say the verification is done. The simulation uh, results will verify, do verify the calculations. Let's also look at the actual circuit in Tina Ti SPI simulator and so see how we can generate these values there. So let's now jump to the SPI simulator. All right, we are now here in the SPI simulator. You can see the VES, 16 volts. We have the R1, the, uh, I mean R2 and R1 and the diodes. And also the current arrows to measure the currents here. And also the voltage pin to measure the V out here. Okay, now let's see what the values are in this simulator again. So we do the following. So let me repeat what I have just done. The analysis, DC analysis, and you go to calculate no voltages. That will determine all the values the measurements you put in your circuit. So if I do that, you can see the current and also the voltages. You can also look at the specific component. Let's say click on this component R3, this pen, it will be highlighted in red. You can see its voltage and also its current. So this voltage is exact same as this V out because it is parallel. You can also check the diode voltage, for example, D1. That is 732 approximately millivolts. So not 700. So that was our assumption. And if I look at D2, that is yeah, 736 millivolts. So also not 700, but very close. And those small differences between the, the, in the D1 and D2, because we assume everything was 700 always, when it's forward bias, will create these small errors in our calculations. Because we had in our calculations 70 milliamps, 41.2 milliamps and 39.6 milliamps and also 18.6 milliamps and here 11.88 volts. So very small errors. That's just to this small difference in the voltage. It doesn't really matter at the moment, but when you go, for example, to 500 millivolts or maybe 800 millivolts, it might have a slightly uh, effect on your actual circuit performance. Then you need to fine tune your circuit, maybe adjust the resistor value or anything else in the circuit. All right, guys, this is done for the second example, having a circuit with the diodes, in this case, two diodes. Uh, I will continue in the next uh, example using two sources and two diodes in order to see how we can tackle the problem there, because then we cannot just assume the diode is 
uh, on. So we're going to say the diode is conducting. So we need to then look at the variations for a diode conduction like on and off. That will be clarified in the next video. If you have any questions about this video or any other video, just let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.